In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Good afternoon to you all, and welcome to Mass. Good morning to those who are going to be joining us on television tomorrow morning to celebrate this Mass with us for the fourth Sunday of Lent. By tradition, this Sunday is known as Leitare Sunday, which is called Rejoicing Sunday. And it was meant, like the third Sunday of Advent, to be a little break from the rigors of Lenten observance to look beyond to see what is there. And of course, that's why this Sunday was always chosen as Mothering Sunday, which of course uh, it is this weekend time for happiness, a time for hope, and that is reflected uh, particularly in the second reading in the Gospel today about God's great love for us, what it meant and what he did because of it. So conscious of the love of Almighty God and his Son Jesus Christ, we celebrate our Mass together and we seek initially forgiveness for the times we have failed him. You were sent to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who through your word reconciled the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, your people may hasten towards the solemn celebrations to come. And we ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading, a reading from the second book of Chronicles. All the heads of the priesthood, and the people too, added infidelity to infidelity, copying all the shameful practices of the nations, and defiling the temple that the Lord had consecrated for himself in Jerusalem. The Lord, the God of their ancestors, tirelessly sent them messenger after messenger, since he wished to spare his people and his house. But they ridiculed the messengers of God. They despised his words. They laughed at his prophets. Until at last the wrath of the Lord rose so high against his people that there was no further remedy. Their enemies burned down the temple of God, demolished the walls of Jerusalem, set fire to all its palaces, and destroyed everything of value in it. The survivors were deported by Nebuchadnezzar to Babylon. They were to serve him and his sons until the kingdom of Persia came to power. This is how the word of the Lord was fulfilled, that he spoke through Jeremiah. Until this land has enjoyed its Sabbath rest, until seventy years have gone by, it will keep Sabbath throughout the days of its desolation. And in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, to fulfill the word the Lord that was spoken through Jeremiah, the Lord roused the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, to issue a proclamation and to have it publicly displayed throughout his kingdom. Thus speaks Cyrus, king of Persia. The Lord, the God of heaven, has given me all the kingdoms of the earth. He has ordered me to build him a temple in Jerusalem, in Judah. Whoever there is among you of all his people, may his God be with him. Let him go up. The word of the Lord. O oh, let my tongue cleave to my mouth, if I remember you not. Okay. 
by the rivers of Babylon. There we sat and wept, remembering Zion. On the poplars that grew there, we hung up our harps. For it was there that they asked us, our captors for songs, our oppressors for joy. Sing to us, they said, one of Zion's songs. Oh, how could we sing the song of the Lord on alien soil? If I forget you, Jerusalem, let my right hand wither. Oh, let my tongue cleave to my mouth, if I remember you not, if I prize not Jerusalem above all my joys. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. God loved us with so much love that he was generous with his mercy. When we were dead through our sins, he brought us to life with Christ. It is through grace that you have been saved and raised us up with him and gave us a place with him in heaven, in Christ Jesus. This was to show for all ages to come through his goodness towards us in Christ Jesus, how infinitely rich he is in grace because it is by grace that you have been saved through faith. Not by anything of your own, but by a gift from God. Not by anything that you have done, so that nobody can claim the credit. We are God's work of art, created in Christ Jesus to live the good life as from the beginning he had meant us to live it. The word of the Lord. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. God loved the world so much that he gave his only Son. Everyone who believes in him has eternal life. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Jesus said to Nicodemus, The Son of Man must be lifted up as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. Yes, God loved the world so much that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not be lost, but may have eternal life. For God sent his Son into the world, not to condemn the world, but so that through him the world might be saved. No one who believes in him will be condemned. But whoever refuses to believe is condemned already, because he's refused to believe in the name of God's only Son. On these grounds is sentence pronounced, that though the light has come into the world, men have shown they prefer darkness to the light because their deeds were evil. And indeed, everyone who does wrong hates the light and avoids it, for fear his actions should be exposed. But the man who lives by the truth comes out into the light, so that it may be plainly seen that what he does is done in God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Among all the things that distress us and disturb us when we look at the news and other programs on the television, every now and again there's something that fills us with cheer and with hope. And so it was that this week there was a wonderful picture of an old lady's hand. 
She was sitting in her residential community, her hands folded on her lap. And then we saw a hand stretch over and take her hand. It was the hand of her daughter, who had not seen her mother face to face for nearly a year. It was a deeply moving and emotional moment. And there was real love and joy between them. The daughter was so excited at the prospect of seeing her mother again and holding her hand and giving her a hug. Things that we normally take completely for granted. And it was a real love. It wasn't feigned. It wasn't just an empty gesture. It was a love that was born of appreciation. Appreciation for all her mother had been to her and still was. And in the normal run of things, in the hurly-burly of life, we don't tend to show that appreciation too much to our mothers or to our fathers. Except, of course, this weekend which is Mothering Sunday. Like, it was quite packed in Morrison's at 8 o'clock this morning. I thought, I'll go early and get the flowers for my mum's grave. The place was packed. <laughs> and there was flowers everywhere. And I wanted to do what many of you will do. Go to my mother's grave tomorrow to show her how much I appreciated her. And I can see in front of me at least three people who will be doing this for the first time this year. And we do it not as a sort of token gesture, because that's what you do. We do it because we love our mums and our dads. And some of that love is now tainted with regret, especially if they have taken their leave of us, that maybe we might have shown them more love, but we were just too busy. And the interviews that people have had during the week reveal that. I wish I'd shown more love to my mum, who I know loved me. Infants love their parents because that's their world. They look for them for safety, security and warmth and love. And then as they grow up and move into adolescence, their parents become uncool. There used to be a, an advert for this dad taking his daughter to school and he'd got this nice car, you know. And he thought it'll show off his nice car and she was just thinking, don't drop me anywhere near the this, this school, you know. <laughs> don't blow a kiss at me, don't do things like that because it's not cool. <laughs> and that's what happens. It's happened to all of us and happens today. Sad really, isn't it, that it has to be like that. Maybe there are ways in which it won't be, but that's growing up for you. And then when you get older, maybe when children have their own children, they begin to appreciate what their parents, their mother in particular, did for them. There's still a hint of selfishness because it's an opportunity for cheap childcare, for house watching, for shopping. And I think I said this before, and I certainly said it in the Hinkley Times recently, 
a rather sad and sinister development during the COVID outbreak has been the control of elderly people by their own children, having to ask their children's permission if they can go out like infants. And this is not always a nice thing. Many of our older people are living in fear of their own children, which strikes me as very bizarre. And sometimes, because we need the reassurance of our children's love, we make ourselves pathetic. One of my first memories of arriving here 17 years ago was standing outside the gates of St. Peter's School in the middle of the afternoon. The children were playing in the playground and three or four of their mothers were standing outside the gates looking through. And they would shout to their children, Love you, babe! Love you, love you, love you, love you, love you, babe! And I was thinking, what? What is that about? And what it was about was their lives were all about their children. And they needed their children's reassurance and appreciation, even in the midst of other children. It's really sad. And then you get the, the kind of pathetic mother who wants to be her daughter's best friend. You know, that's pathetic. You're the mother, not the best friend. You know, so they're like, they dress like each other and the mother assumes the daughter's musical tastes. And it's because they want not to lose them. They somehow want to have their appreciation when really the young lady needs her mum to be her mum. There's a, a lovely advert, I forget what it's for now, I just saw it there a couple of nights of, of a young woman who's got a newborn baby and she's feeding the baby and she's talking to her mother on all of these things and she's crying because she's struggling and her mother just tells her how to do it. Years of experience. And you can see the love and gratitude that this young lady with a new baby has for her mother. It's really nice. It's really nice. But sometimes, as I say, mothers and fathers make themselves pathetic to gain their children's affection because the children can't see it. And so, if a teacher tells off a child, they might have a visit from an angry parent saying, you've got no right to do this. And really the parent is more concerned that people think they're not good parents because their children are misbehaving. It's quite strange. It's true. And as my brother told me once, he was, I told you this before, he was a head teacher. And this 13-year-old started um, swearing at teachers and beating people up on the bus. So my brother gave him what he called a little holiday. He suspended him for five days. Along comes his dad and says to my brother, Now, Mr Daly, you must understand that my son will give his respect to these teachers when they've earned it. <laughs> my brother said to him, Well, actually, it works the other way around here. And this guy got this notion that, you know, all the teachers should do exactly what his son wanted, even if he was misbehaving. So there is a sense of being pathetic sometimes. The parents make themselves pathetic. And this might sound very strange to you, but that is exactly what Almighty God has done. He's made himself pathetic to gain the love of his children. 
It's that story from the book of Chronicles about what's called the Babylonian exile. That God kept giving him chances and he just couldn't be ran out. And then we are told by St. Paul and our Lord in St. John's Gospel, God loved us with so much love that he was generous with his mercy. And our Lord said, Yet God loved the world so much that he gave his only Son. Almighty God has made himself pathetic to gain our appreciation. And in the end, he sent his son. It reminds me of one of the opening songs of Mother Mary about God being rejected. Don't reject me, I'm your father. Come back with all your heart. Turn to me again. I love you. We'll make a brand new start. And now they turned away. When nothing could be done, he sent his only son, his life, his love, the only one. God, as a parent, makes himself pathetic to gain our love. That is the length to which he will go. And just as during this COVID period, many of us have come to appreciate the love of our parents even more because we've had time to think about it, we've been away from them, not able to see them. Just as that has clearly happened, thankfully, to many people, so also in this time of difficulty, it may well be that we can come to a deeper appreciation of Almighty God who has loved us so much, even though we didn't love him. The only way to live with God is to love him, not to pay him lip service, not to make empty gestures as sometimes Mother's Day flowers can be, but to reach out our hands to him, like that lady who wanted to take her mother's hand into hers. God reaches out his hand to all of us. Is it possible? that knowing why we could reach out our hands and hearts to him. Now let us stand and profess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. 
I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God has loved us with so much love that he was generous with his mercy. When we were dead through our sins, he brought us to life with Christ. Let us thank the Father for his great love for us as we make our prayer today. Dear Father, please help us to appreciate and understand more fully the love you have for us and to respond in prayer and action with gratitude and generosity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this Lenten season, may we take time for prayer and reflection to feed on your word and to be filled with your truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May we not be afraid to accept criticism of our way of life and how we have failed you. Teach us to judge ourselves first before we judge anyone else. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you for all the good work that is done by many people and charities to raise our awareness of the suffering of so many others all over your world and how often it may be relieved quite simply. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. On this Mother's Day, we thank you for our mothers and all that they are to us and have done for us. Please make this a happy family day for everyone even in the present circumstances. And comfort those who have lost their mothers in recent years and feel their passing so keenly. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless our children. May they be a constant source of joy to their parents and to all of us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. This week would have been Father Terry's 90th birthday. We remember him and Reverend Robin, especially today, and ask you to take them into your eternal home and light. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. On this Mother's Day, we turn to the Mother of Jesus, who is our Mother too, in love and honour, as we pray with her. Hail Mary, Mary full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In a moment of silence, we place our own prayers before our Father in heaven. Loving Father, in service of the truth, our community was formed 260 years ago. In service of the truth who is your Son, Jesus Christ, you have called us ever since to live and work here as your family. We commemorate with gratitude the beginnings of our community and the loving witness of all those who have worked to sustain and develop it over the years. We celebrate with joy all that you have given us in our community life today. We promise with sincerity to continue to proclaim the good news of your Son, to live in his way, devoting ourselves anew to regular prayer, the relief of the suffering everywhere, and the service of you and each other. We make these prayers through him, who is the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please look at the newsletter for details of the Mass time this week. Um, on Monday, 10 o'clock Mass in Old Shield, be at 1 o'clock as it is Mass for Mrs. Teresa's. The stage of the cross tomorrow are in Osworth at 6 o'clock, Sunday in Old Shilton. They've also been recorded on YouTube so that you can access them from your home time during Lent. I'd like to say say a thank you to everyone who supported the liturgies for, for, for Reverend Robin's funeral, particularly our stewards, Mark, and all those who played any part making these so beautiful. There are one or two of the services 
books left if you'd like to welcome. And the book gardens will be open until Monday. Uh, you can send a message by putting it in a box or email. Now, Father Brian is for at least eight weeks, which is a great time. He has to have a hip, second hip. Uh, when he got home from his funeral, he rang me up. They just run me to isolate for two for the surgery. He won't be here for uh, eight weeks. And of course, we think of him at that time. Fortunately, he's with Father Anthony that he would be willing to say a mass or two for us, and he'll be again coming to the market Bosworth, presumably next week. And that's very kind of him to do that, and we'll make him you know him as being. But uh, be a great help to have Father Anthony with us or to him being back for him. Thank you very much for the family fast of uh, £150, including gift aid, given the circumstances of this year, is wonderful. And if you want to take a box to keep them uh, still in the pool. To draw your attention to the in the newsletter um, about restrictions placed on us by government in regard to COVID. just the little bits. Yes, we relax, we don't want this stringent. We do have to do what has to do, particularly with regard to leaving, just get up at the and walk out. You have to be the stewards, maintain social distance. Nice to be able to have a word with each other outside to keep a little between you as you do. Uh, they're only little things, but the thing that enabled us to keep the church and many other churches have not been, been shut. Thing. So we're very lucky to do that. So, special note that uh, newsletter and to help stewards to do what they kindly do. Behalf. I hope all those people concerned, you have happy mothers, would be like it, aren't all beat. Uh, but nevertheless, this Mother's Day, I hope a happy capacity for your family. Holy Mass, which we celebrate joyfully today, acceptable to his own. Father, we place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world. And we ask this. Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ who is our Lord. By the mystery of the Incarnation, he has led us, the human race that walked in darkness, into the radiance of the faith that has brought us as born in slavery to ancient sin, through the waters of regeneration, to make us your adopted children. And so, with all the angels and saints, we proclaim your glory forever, as we say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You 
are indeed holy, O Lord, the fountain of all holiness. Let your Spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave you thanks and praise. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again he gave you thanks and praise, gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. And now let us proclaim together our faith in this mystery. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate this memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, the bread of life and the cup of eternal salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and serve you. May all of us who share in the body and blood of your Son be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church throughout the world and bring us into the fullness of love together with Francis our Pope, Patrick our Bishop and all who serve your people. Remember our brothers and sisters who have gone to their rest in the hope of rising again. Bring them and all who have died into the light of your presence. mercy on us all, make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, the Apostles, the Martyrs, St. Peter, and all your saints who have done your will throughout the ages. May we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. And now let us turn to God and speak his name with reverence and love in the words our Saviour himself has given us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy keep us free from sin, and protect us from all anxiety, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and the unity of your kingdom, where you live and reign forever and ever. May the peace and the joy of the Lord be with you now and always. Let us acknowledge each other with a simple word of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Jesus. This 
This is the body of Jesus who takes away the sin of all the world. Happy are we who are called to share the life that he gives. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be. Let us pray. O God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, enlighten our hearts with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to you, and love you in all sincerity. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Three little things I'm sorry I forgot to say to you earlier. First of all, I'm hoping that we'll have the magazines to be on sale next week. There are the printers at the moment. Hopefully that will happen. Secondly, just to meet Mass, the Ash Petty Orton will be in the church cemetery. And if you any of you join her family, you'll be very welcome. And the last thing to say a word of thanks and gratitude to the mother of our parish. So happy Sunday from all of us.
God be with you. May Almighty God us. Let the Son of the Spirit. This Mass is going up to Christ.